everybody. My name is Sherry. Welcome to my stamp studio. We are going to do a card today that features um, several little different touches. I started it based on using some designer series paper because that is what's on sale this month. So mo a lot of our papers, most of them are 15% off of the designer series paper. This one is called Inks Botanicals. If you're in card club, um, it is our June card club paper, but you might want to get another pack of it while it's on sale because it's super fun and I have used it a ton. So this is the first card club, card, can't talk, card club project um, that I have done for this month. And the other reason that I used it is because I'm working on the other two projects for Card Club. And so this is what's on my table right now. Um, but it's a really fun paper. You can go watch this um, video if you didn't catch that card. So I used the paper. It's a six by six. It's a really fun color combination. And then I wanted to use, and it just so happened that it goes, it goes really well together. These new dies, they're just standalone dies. They are called Petal Pattern Dies. Um, and they're in the back of the current catalog, so they're new. But I really was intrigued that this shape matches kind of the shape that is in the punch pack that comes in the inked and tiled bundle. So it's not exact, but it is a, it's a nice coordinating look. And I was really pleased with the way it, it turns out. So let's get going on the card. I am going to use um, a different combination of the two papers on this card from what I did on the first one. That way you can just see um, what they look like. So we will start with our paper. And I have chosen these two papers. So this will be a background. This is what I'm going to do the larger flowers. And the nice thing about these dies, if you get them, you don't have to use them both on a card. You can use just one or the other. I just wanted to use both because they're new. So you can see that it does um, I didn't measure it, but I have my ruler, my handy dandy ruler right here. I, there's a six of these ac across, so I cut it in half for my card. So it is, of course, I don't put it on the side that starts with one. It's, it's a five by five square, which is not a standard size because our cards are not five by five unless you're doing a square card. So more than likely, you're going to cut this down when you use it. So I'm going to use this piece and I am going to, I was tempted to just use the other two because like I said, I cut them in half, but then I wanted you to see how easy these are to die. Because sometimes when we have the larger dies, I know some of you were afraid of them and I don't want you to be afraid of them. Then this is just a piece of our regular gold foil also in the back of the catalog. Um, I'm not going to do a whole one of it because I'm going to cut it down and then I'm going to end up with a ton of stuff that sits on my desk for a while and I feel guilty about because I haven't used it. So I just decided that was what was left of the gold foil that I was using. So this one, you could cut it down to a five by five square. I just was lazy. So I put it on here because if you have the new cut and emboss machine, a six by six paper will work. If you're still using a big shot, you may have to trim it down a little bit um, to get it to go in. Well, not the, the paper, but it, you can't. I don't think a six by six paper fit in there. So I did find that just because of the ease of punching them out on this one, I did not roll it back. I just went through once and it cut fine, but then I just spent a couple of minutes poking them all out. So I'm hoping that rolling this back takes care of that. And I do have on a sweatshirt, it is summertime, but I don't know if those of you in the Midwest, we got a cold spell. So the high today is supposed to be 70 and it's in the afternoon, it is not 70 it's maybe 63. And so at some point I put on my slippers and then I decided I'm just going to go ahead and put a sweatshirt on. So I'm warm. No sense in being cold. So here is this super pretty and you could do either side. It does make a mess. So you'll want to have your little trash bin handy and you can see the static. I would have thought that wouldn't be as bad this time of year as it might be in the winter. I'm going to turn it over this way now. So for the gold one, it does help to go because this is foil, so it's a little bit thicker of a paper. I found it helped to go back and forth, and then I did flip it upside down because I always look to make sure they've cut, which I'm gonna show you how to do that now. And it could just depend on your machine. I have two machines, so the other machine may do a better job. It's just on how tight your machine is. So we're gonna go once. And then we're gonna go back.
And then you're gonna hold your two plates here super tight together because you don't want this to move apart. So flip it over and I should have used, this is um, not great, but if you could see it and it's partly, I think, see my plate is bowed. So it's not cutting right here, right where my plate is bowed. So it's probably not the die, it's probably my plate, but I'm a little cheap and I like to use the plates until they're not usable anymore. So I'm just gonna roll it this way. Now you can see all these things are popping out. And then I'm just gonna go back one more time. And then see where these weren't as popped out? Now they're all popping in. So when you do it upside down like this, then it's really easy to tell that they've all cut and you don't waste your time then poking, poking, poking. Because when I pull this up, most of this stuff is going to stick to my plates because of the silly static. See? So now all that's really left in here because the first time I did it just back and forth and I thought that would be good and it was, but I had to get this and use it um, to roll them out. I'd rather spend my time stamping and not poking things. And look, now there's just like, there was three pieces left in there that just needed to be pushed out. So it's not a, it's not a difficult die, so don't be afraid of it. I did consider um, having it used in my card club this month and then I reconsidered because it, we can only do one pass at a time and when we have to do multiple passes, then that takes a while. And see, this is the one I used before and I'll show you that in just a second. I'm gonna use this pattern. I just think it'll be fun. It'll be a little bit different. It'll be an obvious difference. I pulled out a couple. Well, I was trying to keep not using the crushed curry on here because I didn't have that ink over. So that eliminated some of them. This one does have a pink on it, but it's subtle enough that I don't think you'll notice. So this is six by six. I'm gonna cut it five and a quarter and then in three. So this also gives you two pieces. So you can do two cards. We have this and then I just laid this on top of here. And remember I said there are six of these across. So I just put it in, just stacked them right on top of each other like that. It's really easy to do. See if I can do it up here. And then I just, Put it right in between these. So you have one, two, three. And then I just went straight through the middle of them. It does leave you some halves. But now you have this. And that's all the trimming we need to do with this. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna work on this piece for a second and then we'll do our stamping. So I used a couple of different adhesives because sometimes I'm lazy. Oh, well, I'm see my red. That means I'm gonna run out because I only ever run out on videos. So I'm gonna run out when I'm mounting it to the cart. I'm gonna use my fine tip glue because I needed this anyway. So we'll just use it on this. You don't need a ton, just enough to kind of get it all on here. And then I'm gonna lay this on here first, just about halfway. And then you're gonna take your overlay and I just put it on these large centers here. I did get it on every one. And then remember that it's on the large centers and you can hold one of those then to stick this on. You do wanna make sure that everything has popped out before you do this, but I did make sure of that. So now you can just touch all of those. And then it needs just a second. So I'm gonna put that on there. Maybe we'll put two. And then while I just let those sit for a second, I'll show you the other one. So here is this pattern. And you see you can do it either way. I think if I was gonna do this one, it's a little bit more fun of a pattern. So I don't know that I would use the foil. And you can see then you can take these and you just have as many different combinations as this, this all of on the paper, they all look good. I think you could even do this, which is not the same sheet of paper. That's two different pieces of paper, but it gives just enough of a um, flower thing. And you could also raise those up. So there's a zillion and one combinations from this just one package of paper. And if I wanted to keep the yellow, I was trying to 
just use the colors of ink I already had out, but you can do it this way, this way. So super fun. That should be long enough on here. Now I'm going to take these. We have these and you may have done my retreat that I did last year before Christmas. I don't know, it was in the fall where we used the um, metallic enamel effects, but those were in red, black, and white. And so we have a new packet. You may not have noticed them in the catalog because I typically go through and look for the N, which signifies that it's new to that new annual catalog. This doesn't have one, although they are new. They're right next to the other ones in the back of the catalog. So I pulled out the gold because isn't it fun to put a center in all of these that have holes? But you don't really want to use that many embellishments on a card, right? So I'm just going to squeeze these out. It's really easy to do. It dries fairly quickly. There's a nice bit of wind today. So I'm putting a generous amount in the centers of these that don't have them. You could even put a little one if you wanted on the ones that are gold. I just liked these being different. And so this makes these centers be raised up and the other centers are kind of flat. And then I'm going to use it again when I do my little um, sentiment. But for now, we'll just put the lid on. I'm going to set these aside to let it dry. Isn't that fun? And they kind of, they, so you can see some of them have tips. If you didn't do the retreat, then you know when you use it, especially when it's generous and it's kind of heavy, then it will start to flatten itself out. And we just have to cross our fingers that none of my feeling helpers decide to come. So for this one, I'm going to use a vanilla card sheet, card stock as my base, but I'm not going to fold it in half yet because I want to stamp the front and the back. I guess I better stick this on. So I'm going to use Calypso Coral and Lost Lagoon. Lost Lagoon is currently my favorite color. Just keep using it. I'm going to use the leaf and a flower and then the sentiment. Um, so you start with your biggest stamp. In this case, it's the leaves. I've done a couple of other cards and on it, um, I used this too, and I kind of made background paper. I didn't use this paper. So I'm just going to stamp like this. And if you're not quite sure where half of your card is, like where the folds are going to end up, you can put it in here. Um, one, two, three, four. So that's five. So our half's going to be about right here. I don't want a lot of stems. So I'm trying to aim most of the stem off the edge of the card. A couple of them may hit. But if you have too many stems on the front, it can look kind of pokey. I'm just going to fill this up. Because we know the other sheet of paper that we're going to stick on here is three inches. So it's going to go from the fold over. And then that part's going to go off the back of our card. At least I think so. And then I want my friend Tanya stamps backs, insides, all her, every part of her card is stamped and it's always so beautiful and I don't think about it often. But because I was doing the card this way, I decided, oh, that'd be perfect. So now when you fold the card, you're gonna have some of this on the back. I'm gonna take a small piece of vanilla and I'm not gonna re-ink this. I'm just gonna use the ink that's on it because I want it to be lighter. And now we have some light leaves. You can see they're a lot lighter than that. And then I'm gonna take Pretty Peacock. I have found it's a really good mix with um, Lost Lagoon when you wanna have a little bit more contrast. And the first time I did it, so on the first card I'll show you, I didn't, I stamped the Happy Birthday in full strength Lost Lagoon right over the top of this. Um, but I think this Peacock's gonna show up better. Yes, that's way better. So if you don't have it, you can still use, um, a stamp off. You could stamp the leaves off twice and grab the punch. That's part of the punch bundle. Just line this up in here. Now we have our little sentiment. And then I'm going to use clips of coral and the flower. There's a couple of different flowers in this stamp set. I'm going to use the one that's just a single flower. And then we are going to aim for the places where there's the biggest gap. However, it happened to when we stamped our card. And again, you don't want your flower to go exactly 
the same direction all the time, so make sure that you're spinning it around as you stamp. And remember, the um, edge of our card is here, but I'm gonna put that paper right up to the edge, so other than the fact I want some coral on the other side, it doesn't really matter where it hits. So that's all of our stamping. And if you wanted to do, if you don't have um, a darker color, you could stamp off on this and make the flower be the back. It doesn't really matter. And then I'm gonna take my card, fold this in half. And you may ask why I did it that way. Um, I find it's easier to stamp not over the top of the fold. Because you know, sometimes when you have just the fold in the paper, then right where the fold is, the ink doesn't get in there. So now we have a pretty background. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and take Oh, I'm just gonna make it with the adhesive. Let's add this here. So see it doesn't matter, but to the edge of my card. And be careful that you don't touch any of the places that have the adhesive. I'm going to take another little strip of adhesive and put it right down here. And use the ribbon, the Lost Lagoon bordered ribbon, which is part of my club this month as well. So if you're in club, you're getting this. And just kind of stick it on here. that off. Now we just have to add our sentiment. So we have this happy birthday. And then I just wanted, I was going to do it in this gold, but it was a little bit, I thought too much of the same gold. So I just pulled out this new paper, which is fabulous. And you can see I'm going to punch the other punch that's part of this bundle. I did mine after I'd already put the gold drops on it. Not the easiest way. So do this part first. So I wanted to put it behind here, but you can see it just disappears. So what you're gonna do is take your scissors, just cut it in half, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then when you put these on here, now you can get them to stick out. And I don't need a ton, because we have some gold accents already working on the card, but this is so flashy and so pretty. My daughter, the other color that's in this packet, was part of a celebration paper a couple years ago, and she had decided then that she wanted it for her wedding invitation, so we hoarded it, and now you can buy it. I haven't asked her which color she prefers, and I'm gonna just put this on here, but I wanna raise it up a little bit, so I'm gonna add some dimensionals. It will also help because I had to shove mine over, under, on my first card, because, you know, when you're designing the card, sometimes you're not quite sure what you want it to look like. So this time now I can put these dimensionals right on top over those card the uh, pieces of cardstock me and it will help ensure that they don't fall off. A little bit crooked. You notice it more because there are lines on this paper. The other one didn't have as many lines. Now I'm gonna go back to this and I'm just gonna add some dots to here. Kind of tie it all together. So this is a great stand-in for embellishments when you want to put a whole lot of them on a card. I can't wait to use the gold and the silver and the copper um, on some Christmas projects. But I'm not stamping Christmas. We have a preview Christmas set out. I'm not doing Christmas. It's hard for me to participate in Christmas in July because I already feel like the year goes so fast. I don't want it to get here any sooner. But I know some of you like to get ready stamping early. So then I just felt like this one doesn't need it quite as much because this paper has some stuff going on, but I'll go ahead and do it just to show you what I did. Um, I just thought the other one needed a little bit of texture to it. So I took my dark peacock blend and you want the brush tip. And I just added a little bit of that, kind of added some texture. This one doesn't I could have gotten away with not using any, and I'm not going to put this one on here. The other one, I also added a little bit of gold, but I think this one has enough that it's standing nicely on its own. When this is dry, I'm going to go back and I'm going to add just a tiny bit of glue to these corners. My other ones didn't do that. It's just 
where you happen to pull it through. So here's this pattern. And exact same card, the only thing I've really changed was see this happy birthday is a little bit easier to read than that happy birthday. But it's the same, exact same card. Let's see how the back's so pretty when you stamp the back. And I think it's when, when especially if you're sending it in an envelope, if they pull it out this direction, it's a little bit unexpected that there's something on the back. So let me touch these ever so slightly. Oh yeah, those are dry. Didn't want to smush it. Um, it's all I did was I made this card and then I reset my stuff and I went and got a drink. Um, so it's only been really the amount of time that I've been talking because I added the dots to the end. Yeah, these are dry too and those are fatter. So if you have any questions, let me know and I will catch you back here later this week. Bye.